Thank you. Bwana asifiwe. Uh, najua tumezoea and we are used to fast service being English service. Lakini we want you to understand sisi ni wamama. Kwa hivyo tutachanganya zote Bwana asifiwe. Amen. We give glory and honor this morning for God giving us such a wonderful day. Wa mama tuweze kushiriki na kufanya kazi ya Bwana. Tunataka kuwakaribisha wote ambao wamefika mahali hapa. Jina langu, oh my name is Harriet Major and I'm saved. I love the Lord as my personal savior. So I'm excited this morning to just come and serve the Lord who has called us for a purpose. Kama wa mama na waambia whenever Jesus went, he met women. And one thing that encourages me this morning is when everybody had given up, when Jesus was crucified, when Peter had vowed, I would be with you until the last minute, when the disciples were there saying, we will not leave him alone, when they walked with him until he was put on the cross and he died, when he was taken to the grave, everybody left. But the women were left behind. Because they wanted to make sure that our Lord Jesus Christ has been anointed. They also wanted to make sure ya kwamba kichwa kimeka vizuri. They also wanted to make sure ya kwamba amevalishwa na amewekwa vizuri. And so when the angels came, the soldiers outside the grave could not stand the tremor. And they all fell down as though they were dead. But the women were left studying. Kwa hivyo viumbe hivi, ambavyo vinaonekana ni zaifu, we were the first people to be told, go and tell the disciples that I am alive now. Ya kwamba ni merisarekt. And so we were given, we were the first recipients of the gospel. We were told to go and tell the whole world. And this morning, we want to tell the whole world that our Lord lives. We want to convey this message that God loves you. It does not matter what you have done. It does not matter what you have gone through. But the truth of the matter is God is living today because of you and me. Buana Asifiwe. Ninataka tusome. I want us to go through the book of Acts chapter 12. And I know for women this is not new. Because yesterday... The morning devotion was done in Acts chapter 10 and chapter 11. And you know what? When we called Joyce to give us the devotion, and he started talking about uh, uh, Acts chapter 10 and 11, I said, oh my God, my message is being preached today, and therefore itabidi nilare ni meketi ni preach. But I will tell you what, when the Holy Spirit of God is speaking. Nobody can stop. She did not touch Acts chapter 12. And that is the one I'm going to speak today. Glory be to God. Acts chapter 12, we are reading from verse uh, 1 to 11, and I'll go very fast because of time. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James the brother of John, put to death with a sword. When he saw that this met with the approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. That's a total of 16 soldiers studying to, to secure one man not to get out of jail. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying because there is a position of the church to the brethren. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, 
Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, two soldiers, and two soldiers, they were there. A total of four. Uh, bowed with the two chains, and I'm imagining one ilikuwa kwa mikono, and the other one ilikuwa kwa migu. And sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up, saying, Quick, get up, he said. And the chain fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and saddles. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around, meaning there was no hope for Peter coming back to prison. We know many times, oh mama, to know whether your house girl has uh, left or she's coming back. What do you check? Kama ameenda na nguo zote. Eh, hata wakati ametoka amekwambia ameenda unarudi bedroom uangalie kama nguo ziko. So the angel of the Lord alimwambia, chukua mshipi, va, chukua cloak, put on, chukua viatu, twende because Peter was not to come back to jail. And follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and the second gate. The first and the second city. It opened for them by itself. And they went through it when they had walked the length of one street. Suddenly, the angel left Peter. And in verse 11 says, Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without doubt that the Lord has sent me angels and rescued me from Herod's crutches and from anything, everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen to me. Buana asifiwe. Neno la mungu liko hapo. And I just want to start by our theme today is the attitude of a Christian woman. And the attitude of a Christian man. And the attitude of a Christian youth. Buana asifiwe. What is attitude? Attitude is a settled way of thinking or feeling about something. And so, whenever you are talking, people are looking at the attitude that you are wearing. It is the way, it is the way that you observe things, it's the way you think about them. In Kiswahili, ni mtazamo, ni jinsi, unavyo ona mambo, unavyo fikiria, unavyo hisi kuhusu jabo fulani. There are three types of attitudes. And allow me very fast to mention them. The first uh, type of attitude by one theologia is cognitive component. This relates to our beliefs, our knowledge, our experience, our upbringing. This component allow us to present things in a very confident way because we know what we are doing and what we are saying. This is the confidence that our Lord Jesus Christ had because he was born as the son of God when he went to the temple and he was preaching with the power and authority because he realized his cognition told him you are the son of God. And therefore he had the power and authority and even when the teachers of the law were coming they were asking Ninani who you? When the mother and father came looking for him walimwambia muna nitafuta niko katika nyumba ya baba yangu because they realized that this attitude that he was brought up with is the one that was speaking. There is a cognitive attitude among many of us who are born in pain who are named pain and thus we will remain in these conditions forever ninataka kusema asubuhi ya leo there is an attitude the cognitive attitude 
that you have, if it is negative, you have to shed it off. If it is positive, you have to pick it and run with it. There are people who have an attitude because they were born in bitterness. They were born in chaos. They were born in rivals. And they grew knowing nothing else but war. And therefore, unapo mukaribia huyu mutu ananuka vita. Mana alizaliwa katika vita. Na akachua, for you to survive, you must nilazima upigane. There are others that were born in rejection. And therefore, whenever they go, they want to prove themselves that I am here and I'm not rejected. And for you to feel me, I must do something so that you know you cannot reject me. I am saying this morning, this negative attitude should end because there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. The second is behavioral attitude. The way we react certain things, either positive or negative. Tabia na matendo yanayo jitokeza kuhusiana nyajabo fulani. Bwana asifiwe. The negative behavior, we have it. Even in church. Wakati unatoka pale inche, unafikiria mtu watakusalimia, na unakuta, he's not greeting you. Do you know we have lost many church members because somebody failed to greet them? Do you know we have lost many church members because the attitude told them they were born in rich families and when they look around, they realize Bahati is not, not for rich families. What they fail to understand is that the class you have is God who has given to you. And so they have left the church with this attitude, which we call behavioral attitude. Buana sefiwe. The third attitude is effective or emotional. The feelings that you feel when something happens. Nihisia zakidani. Basically, attitudes are neither po either positive or negative. When one's knowledge Belief and feelings are negative. They definitely produce negative attitude. Herald. Herald. And I now go to the book that we have read. Herald. His belief. His knowledge. Towards Christian was negative. His feeling towards Christian was negative. His emotions towards Christian was negative. Why? Because there was a historical background behind Herod that one day when the king was having a birthday, the sister called Herodias came with a daughter and sang for the king and the king was so excited and he felt and he said and he vowed that I will give you anything you want. Takupatia chochote kile umenibia vizuri sana nitakupatia chochote kile ambacho unataka na kwa sababu Herodias alichukia wa Kristo msichana alikibia kwa mamake akamuliza mam unataka niambie mfalme ninataka nini Herodias akamwambia enda uambie mfalme unataka kichwa cha John the Baptist and because the king had vowed and he could not retrieve or get back. He therefore went and called for the head of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was beheaded na kichwa yake ikaletwa na tree. Even as the king loved John the Baptist, he had no alternative. Herod had this attitude that John the Baptist had been killed and nothing happened to Herodias. Nothing happened to the king. And so he formed a cognitive attitude that nothing happens. I want to say here, negative attitudes thrives in behaviors that goes for a long time without being punished. Bwana asifiwe. Nina samaje, negative attitudes thrives in behaviors that goes unpunished for a long time without being punished. Ulikuwa kanisani, ulikuwa mwaminifu, ukaanza kuoja pombe. 
ukakunywa 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 ukaona hakuna mahali Mungu anakupeleka Ulikuwa kanisani ulikuwa unapenda bibi yako ulikuwa unapenda watoto wako ulikuwa unawapeleka outing ulikuwa unaita your wife my dear my sweet lakini wakati mmoja ukafika ukaanza kupigana na familia yako negative attitudes ika thrive ika thrive ukalia raisa kube hata mtu kupiga bibi si kitu <laughs> kwani hata kupiga watoto si mimi dia bwana mwenye nyumba watanipeleka wapi that behavior thrived 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 until it went to the next level when you realize that nobody is giving you a punishment the negative attitude continue growing with you until one day tumeona watu wengi wameua wake zao wameua watoto wao wameua mabibi zao wameua baba na mama zao kwa sababu ya negative attitude Peter was persecuted and the historical background behind this is because Herod alikuwa ameona hakuna mtu ananiuliza kwa hivyo akachukua James aka 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 execute na wakagojea Peter akuche dio waweze kumu execute Let me tell you the grace of God is sufficient but the grace of God can come to an end Bwana asifiwe you cannot thrive in negative attitudes forever because the day is coming when God is going to strike the time has come Peter aliwekwa katika jela akawekwa katikati ya askari wa nne wawili wakamsimamia na wawili wakakaa kado nje kulikuwa na geti ya kwanza na kulikuwa na geti ya pili na kulikuwa na geti ya tatu na geti hizo zote zilikuwa na askari wanne 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 askari 16 wanasimamia mtu mmoja What they did not know is that the power of God can overwhelm any authority and every power that is speaking in our lives. We cannot be held in chains by the enemy because our Father in heaven cares about us. They put him katikati wakamfuga na minyororo lakini Mungu akakuja akasema huyu hataka hapa kwa sababu gani? The Church was praying for Peter. Bwana asifiwe. Herod wanted Peter executed during the Passover. Man alikuwa ameua James. Akaona watu wamefurahi. Just the way when we are in the office, you go and betray your co-employee to the boss na unaona ameenda na unaona watu wote wamefurahi. So the next time you go and betray another one there are times that you come as a boss get in and for you to get a self loading mark you have to throw out every employee in that department so that you can survive i'm saying the grace of god is sufficient but the grace of god can come to an end because when those children of those employees wake up one morning and they miss something to eat they are cry ghost unto the lord herod akajua ya kwamba nilitenda na hakuna mahali nilifanywa lakini the angel of the lord came Say the angel of the Lord came. And he came at night. And he spat Peter. Akamwambia Peter, amuka, vaa nguo, vaa mshipi, vaa viatu kwa sababu hautarudi hapa tena. Oh the guards that were around, they did not know what was happening. Bwana asifiwe. And within no time, Peter was out the station. He was out the first gate he was out the second gate and he was out the third gate na biblia inasemaje when he got to the fourth gate which was facing the city it was really tight but the door opened wanna see 
ushastuka umetoka nchi ya Kenya hujui milango inafunguliwa na stima unaenda America mnafika mahali murago inajifungua karibu unataka kurudi nyuma because that is what happened the gate opened and Peter was out because there were people who were praying for him wakatoka hapo wakapelekwa street ya pili akaachiliwa na malaika na alipotoka hapo hapo chini inasema he went looking for the brethren he met them praying and he said i am here at one point rhoda when he said peter is with us everybody said you are mad you are mad you are mad peter cannot be here and she insisted they said go and open for him and when peter got in he told them let me tell you what has happened and he narrated the whole story and then he disappeared because he didn't want to be caught bwana asifiwe ninatakaje kusema leo ya kwamba kile shetani amekupangia haitatamilika bwana asifiwe our god will deliver you from every situation of the enemy oh god we will come and deliver you i have